Okay, let's check out that weird domain function, domain definition for composite functions. So we're still in section 2.6, um, looking at those functions of functions, right, composite functions. Um, so the domain, super, super tricky, and I think once we do a couple examples, it'll get easier. Um, here, I'm just copied the definition again. It consists of the numbers x in the domain of g, such that g is also in the domain of f. Huh? Um, so let's just write out the steps. So we're going to start with um, x in g, which means we're going to find the domain of g, or the inner function. So step one is to write down the domain of the inner function. Step two is then to find um, the composite. So once we have the composite, if there's any new restrictions, that's what that second part of the definition is saying, we're going to add them. So let's just jump into an example and make sense of this, because I'm sure it's super confusing. So let's find f of g of x and its domain. So fog, or f of g of x, means we're going to plug 1 over the square root of x into f. So rather than plugging in x, we're going to plug in 1 over square root of x. So this might be new for some of you as well. So the way the domain works is before I plug in, I decide, does this inner function have any restrictions? So what is the domain of the inner function? We did this a couple sections ago, um, but we learned that square roots, we need greater than or equal to zero. So that radicand needs to be greater than or equal to zero, but then the denominator can't be zero. So in this case, it looks like x needs to be bigger than 0 so that we can take the square root and we can throw it in the denominator. So this is my step 1. This is my restriction in step 1. So no matter what my final answer is, I can't input any numbers less than 0 or equal to 0. All right, let's review how these work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this x squared plus 4, and I'm going to replace x with 1 over the square root of x and then square it. So maybe we've never done this, or maybe it's been a really long time, but we're plugging a function into a function. So I like to do, sometimes I find squares helpful. Um, highlighting works, that's why I'm highlighting it in orange. Um, it's just weird because you're replacing x with something more complicated. Um, and then we'll simplify it. So what do we get? 1 over square root x squared would be 1 over x plus 4. And that's pretty much it. Are there any new restrictions? The domain now would be x can't be 0. Um, but that was already restricted, so there's no new restrictions. So f of g of x is 1 over x plus 4, where x is greater than 0, coming from there. So even though we technically could plug in negative 5, because of the original function, because of what we started with, um, negative 5 doesn't work. Because really what we're doing is we're starting with x's, we're inputting into 1 over square root x. So that's already eliminating some x values. And then we're plugging into x squared plus 4. So even though x squared plus 4 has lots of numbers allowed, we already lost some numbers with the first step. So hopefully that helps. I got a bunch more of these, so maybe we'll feel better by the end. Um, let's do the opposite. So you can do fog, and you can do g of f. And they're not the same thing, so order does matter. And you'll see that we get a different option here. So on this one, we're going to go backwards. We're going to say g of f of x. So I'm going to plug in x squared this time, x squared plus 4 into g of x. So it's backwards, and it is not the same function you'll see in a second. So first, what's the domain of x squared plus 4? Um, it's a polynomial, so there's no restrictions, right? All real numbers. So no restrictions. So, so far, we can plug in any x. And then we'll have to see if there's any limitations later. 
So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one over square root and then rather than plugging in x, we're gonna plug in x squared plus four. And then we could do a little algebra lesson real fast. Do not, do not, do not do this. So I'm, I see students in calculus do this all the time. X squared plus four in a square root is not X squared plus four separately and then X plus two. No, you cannot square root sums. Don't do it. Um, it is what it is. So you cannot square root sums. I'm only telling you this because I see calculus students do it all the time. Do not do it. If you weren't gonna do it, great. If you were gonna do it, write yourself a note. <laughs> Don't do it. So this function is just g of f of x, and it's just one over square root x squared plus four. There is absolutely no way you can simplify it. Let's just check out the domain. So we already have no restrictions from step one. And then step two is just, are there any new restrictions? So the new restrictions tells me x squared plus four needs to be greater than zero because it's a radicand and a denominator. Uh, but isn't x squared plus four always positive? Because um, x squared is positive, you add four, or x squared is greater than negative four, right? That's always true because x squared is always positive. So the domain is still all real numbers, or negative infinity to infinity. So any number works in this machine. Cool, should we try one more in this video and then take a break? Um, so let's do f of g and then we'll do g of g. That's something we haven't done yet. So let's do f of g first, because we've done that before. So f of g means f of g, we're gonna input g. So we're gonna plug one over x into f. So I'm gonna replace the x's in f with one over x. So before we do that, are there any domain restrictions? So anytime you're inputting a function, is anything restricted? Yeah, since this is a denominator, it means x can't be zero. So we'll keep that in mind as we get to the end of this. And then I'm going to plug those in. So rather than 4 minus x, it'll be 4 minus 1 over x. Rather than 2 plus x, it'll be one, 2 plus 1 over x. So I think highlighting in color helps me visualize this really well. You might feel differently. Um, but I'm replacing the x's with 1 over x. So how do we simplify this? So the way we simplify when we have like fractions in fractions, we multiply by the denominator, which is x. And that's allowed because I'm timesing by one, right? X over X is one. It's like a big fancy one. Right, that's allowed because I'm timesing by one. So we do, we distribute the X. So we get four X minus one. And then we get two X plus one. And that's my F of G. Um, X can't be zero from step one. And then are there any new restrictions? So zero technically works in this final function, but again, because we used one over X in between, we can't use zero. So it can't be zero. And then also two X plus one can't be zero. So what's that? Two X can't be negative a half. So my domain is just X can't be zero, negative a half. And that is my composite function. So even though technically zero works in this final result, because we used one over X in between, zero didn't make the cut. It got cut out in that middle machine. We lost it. If we went back to like those piecewise functions, right, we'd probably have a hole at zero, if you remember that from the last section. Um, so let's try G of G and then we'll end this video. So g of g just means you take g of x and you plug g of x into it, as weird as that is. So I'm gonna plug one over x into g of x. So I'm gonna replace the x with one over x, as weird as that is. 
So any domain restrictions before we move on? Yeah, x can't be zero. So we're gonna start with x, we're gonna input it into one over x, right? Zero has been eliminated, there is no zero. And then we're just gonna input it into one over x again and see what happens. So one over x would be one over one over x here, as weird as that is. <laughs> we're replacing x with one over x. All right, let's zoom in a little. And then how do we simplify this? We can just multiply top and bottom by x. So I get x on top and I get one on the bottom, so it's just x. So g of g of x or g of g of x either works. Is x where x can't be zero? So this would probably look like a line. We saw this in piecewise functions. It just has a hole at zero. And again, it has to do with the input. The input never had zero as an option. So we just have to keep in mind um, of the pieces. So make sure you write the restricted domain before you move on. Cool. Let me know if you have any questions.